Welcome to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. We have Alexa Wilkan, who is uh, the president of ICANN. He joined the conversation this morning. Uh, he will be joining us. Good morning, Alexa. Yeah, good morning. All right, then. A bit of a background. Uh, economic experts have urged the federal government to encourage digital economy rather than burden it with overtaxation. But usually, some people would say if the country or government is out of ideologies, then taxation will be the front burner. Now, according to them, too many taxes in the digital economy will subtle the growth that encourage productivity in the sector. They stated that if a sector grows, it its taxes remission to the government will do likewise. This is coming on the heels of the federal government's recent suspension of plans to introduce a 5% excess duty on telecommunication services in the nation. If it had gone through, it would have increased the consumption tax on telecom services to 12.5%. The 5% tax was introduced to cushion the effect of debt servicing and the increasing fiscal deficit and low revenues. This was opposed by telecom players and the entire ICT sector. Also, the federal government has already imposed a large and multiple taxes on the sector despite the increasing cost of network expansion and operational costs. So we talk telecommunications Indeed, as the digital sector of Nigeria's economy, as we have joining us, Alexa Wilkins, uh, ICANN chairman. Thank you once again for being part of the show. Uh, well, thank you for having me. And thank you for correcting the first uh, statement about me. I'm not ICANN president. <laughs> I'm chairman okay. Lagos and District Society. Thank you very much. That's okay. Thank you so much as well. Uh, but we'd like to share your thoughts on this development. You know, experts are saying that government should relax it's taxation drive, uh, you know, on the telecom sector. What are your thoughts? Well, I wonder where those experts or experts in what uh, field are they experts in economic experts and telecom business? Economic okay. experts. If they're economic, if they're economic experts, I don't know the area of economy they are looking at. Um, by and large, uh, taxation is uh, is a tool of uh, economic stability and management. It's one of the biggest tools. Uh, used in across the world for economic growth, economic stabilization, uh, uh, economic uh, uh, all economic activity. If you listen to the last uh, debate in the UK uh, uh, Conservative uh, Party election, taxation is was the key. If you listen to the US, um, anytime the US have the election, taxation is key. So taxation is a worldwide uh, uh, economic tools. In fact, the basic economic tools used for economic stabilization and growth. Now, if um, a country like Nigeria uh, that has continuously have revenue challenges, revenue challenges in the fact that uh, needs are mounting, uh, needs are mounting every day, demands are increasing, population is increasing, and so at needs increasing, and government revenue is dwindling by the day. Uh, government, government revenue per capita is, is, is reducing, um, uh, uh, like I said, needs are increasing, demands. Uh, you in the media keep asking government pay us to government do this, government pay doctors, doctors are leaving, government this, government that. And government revenue is dwindling. And the government funds uh, 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 opportunities that are growing within a system for government to increase revenue. I think um, it is what they should be looked at holistically. Because uh, if, you, if, you, if, if you take it by and large, there's no way government can meet services without tax whatever in our own country. And because of low revenue, government has been forced to be borrowing, especially to keep up the, uh, uh, the capital part of our budget. Government has been forced to borrow. Government has been in the, doing in the, a lot of initiative. I'm not a proponent of uh, a multiple taxation, no. But I'm looking at, I'm, I'm a proponent of the fact that uh, government must uh, be ingenious in terms of tax administration. If you, if you look at what has happened in the past, a lot of Nigeria, a lot of uh, uh, there is a lot of um, activity that has gone on task, on task. So we've taken it for granted that most things are free, are supposed to be free, you know. So uh, 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 those saying that government should become yes, there is always what they call pioneer status for every business or every new development, uh, uh, growing business.
there's a pioneer status and it's the legislation, pioneer legislation, that encourages certain businesses to grow and they have tax holiday for a, for a period of time. You know, government in Nigeria has been implementing that, especially the mining industry, agriculture, and some other, even the, tech, even the, 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 the telecom sector, when they came in, they, they, they enjoyed tax holidays. You know, they enjoyed, because these are new investments that the government needed, so they enjoyed tax holidays. You know, so there is that pioneer status for every, uh, uh, in every economy that government gives for certain, so that they can grow and stabilize. It happens. Now, the tax uh, 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 holiday for the telecom sectors, I don't know how long it has lasted. And because the telecom sectors start, I, involved, I, I mean, have been involved in, remember before we started only with voice, uh, 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 voice uh, 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 services, only uh, making calls. We're now going to uh, data services. We're now going to digital economy. We're using it to do all kinds of business. So it's growing and it's widening. The, the opportunities are limitless. So I, I think government must be able also to take advantage of that and make some revenue for it so it can discharge these services. So I am not totally in support of uh, the group that is saying government should roll back. Uh, it's a, a sector that has grown. It's over 20 years old now. We started Telecom 2020, 20, uh, 2002, and it's growing. So if government is not taking advantage of that growth, of that opportunities in order to raise revenue, then uh, I think people, uh, 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 investors will make all the money and then um, and, and smile to the bank, and, uh, we, and the, I will keep complaining every day. I mean, um, uh, so we totally understand the fact that uh, taxation is very important for the growth of an economy. But if you look at the fact that all the sectors, I mean, there are several taxes in different sectors. Even in the telecom sector, there's been taxation prior to this other time. And so it, it's over taxation that we're looking at because of the revenue issue and uh, you know challenges that we're faced with don't you think that you know we're as a government we're over dependent now we're driving the taxation regime overly and overboard because of the fact that we're very dependent on oil oil is not you know a coming forth any longer for us especially when you have the fact that we don't meet uh, the quota by OPEC. We have the issues of oil thefts, on the other hand. And we also have the fact that there's, there's a lot of crisis. You know, you talk about the Ukraine and uh, the Russian crisis, which is not in our favor uh, for us as an oil producing economy. And what do we resort to? What do we fall back to as a means of generating revenue is taxation. Don't you think that this government is overtaxing the people? <coughs> No, certainly, I, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a neither here nor there uh, position. Let me say this. Uh, we have always, as far as I always said that in the time past, government has overlooked because maybe um, out of uh, poor planning, uh, corruption, out of, uh, um, uh, what I would say, incompetence, inefficiencies in the system, inherent in the system before now, government has overlooked so many areas, so many tax uh, uh, areas that it could have used to generate revenue. So it now looks new, or it now looks uh, it's something that is out of the space for government to now start using, I mean, I mean, making and uh, taking advantage of those opportunities that are hitherto supposed to be taxed. You know, so that is where we are. Yes, every, every system has various models of taxation. There is no one Tax, um, tax, uh, 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 tax legislation that covers every tax. For instance, there are some taxes that are meant that are domesticated. Tax that are domesticated, such as uh, PE, um, licenses, and um, other uh, things that are domesticated within either the geographical uh, space that is talking about the states or the immediate constituents talking about local government. There are various levels of tax. If you if, if, if you carry if, if you go and look at the the schedules, the 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 the, the, the that contain chapter 59 of our constitution, you will see that there are responsibilities attached to every spell of government. Now, when you talk about company income tax, VAT, uh, custom duties, those taxes are domesticated at the federal, which controls on behalf of the states. So it's not multiple taxation; it is the layers of taxation that are required at every level. 
You know, so we, 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 we use this word, monetization, loosely. There's nowhere in the world where you have one tax that covers everything because there are domesticated tax that are domesticated. For instance, if you put a mask, as a telecom, if you put a mask somewhere, now that mask, is a, it, 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 it attracts ground rent. It attracts ground rent. Now, it attracts emission control uh, 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 rent or, or uh, uh, tax for that mask. You know, you cannot say because you paid ground rent, then the atmospheric, the environmental hazard that you created that needed to be replenished, that the tax has been built into your operation, will not be taken. It's not done anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world, you have things like that. So it's not multiple. Now, for instance, in this uh, 5% uh, uh, excise duty that was, that the government chickened out, for me, I, 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 as far as I'm concerned, that was not, that was, that, I don't know how it was thought out for the government to go back on that. You know, 5%. It's like increasing the VAT on telecom services to 12.5% to instead of 5%, instead of 7%. So that, for me, shouldn't have been an issue because the, the, the unit increase is negligible. But, of course, when spread over the, the quantum, it's, it, it becomes a, a good revenue base for government. The unit cost is negligible, you know. And if you look at it, and I've always said it, you see, I'm not saying... Uh, we are in the best of uh, places, in the best of uh, uh, situation. But if you look at it generally, Nigeria still has one of the lowest tax regimes in the world, as well with VAT. Nigeria is having 7.5% VAT. Check everywhere, Google everywhere in the world, even the most poorest economy. Look at Ghana. Their VAT is 27.5, it's 17.5%. Some VAT is as much as 32%. You know, so, but we're still operating on that 7.5, in fact, 5% until we get to 7.5, which was like two years ago. So, I'm not saying we are all okay for that, but because of the demands that are attributed to government, which over the years we have not structured our government to relieve, to relieve themselves of those responsibilities, some of those responsibilities, and concentrate mainly on what they're supposed to concentrate, like security, like um, education, like health. We have we've burdened government within, I mean, like things are going fast. We've got the government with a lot of things, subsidy, government now takes over subsidy of petroleum, uh, subsidy of education, subsidy of this. So, so government has been overburdened. And to unbundle those things now will be a bigger challenge. So the best way is for have contributions. You know, we all say that the uh, UK is enjoying, don't are living to the UK. How is the healthcare system in UK funded? It's not really by government. It's through really the NHS trust. Everybody pays for it. Small, small. Little, 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 little. Everybody pays for it. No, you know, so when we say, oh, doctors, Alexa. doctors are paid, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. When you say doctors are paid millions or billions in UK, in Canada, it is not funded solely by government. It is funded by the people because the NHS trust in the UK, you pay for it. So these are the areas that people make little contributions through taxes so that there will be, a, there will be enough revenue to go around in providing those services. That is just all that taxation is all about. And again, taxing the rich or taxing those who consume a service as against those who do not consume it. If you put VAT, it's only for those who consume it. Okay? So, these are some of the, the things that we need to educate people. And so that we know wh uh, what exactly government is doing and how government is doing and why they are doing it. I don't want for government. I have never been in government, but I'm talking at it from a, from a perspective of a Nigerian, uh, as somebody that has a little bit of knowledge in economy, a little knowledge in, uh, in, in income generation and expenditure. So that is just the piece I'm, I'm, I'm talking from. Well, um, I mean, that sounds very great. But to be very honest, following the thoughts that you have actually put out, uh, it should be a give and take situation. And so if government is going to take from the people in form of taxation, which would also help build the economy, government should be giving on the other hand. Uh, what, what are we seeing with the taxes? So you're, you're taxing people on almost every sector and people are paying. But what are the dividends of the taxes? You look at the road infrastructure. That does not help transportation of goods, you know, from different parts, you know, to another. It's a problem. And so those who are into commerce, transportation of goods and services, or movement of persons from one place to the other for transaction, it becomes a problem. So you look at some of these other issues. I mean, how is the economy? You look at some issues that would help businesses thrive. The environment is not friendly. Government has not made that possible for people to begin to pay taxes, despite the fact that there's inefficiency with you know, the collection of taxes, which is not also on the part of the people. Let's talk about the energy you know, supply. 
or the energy sector. We're talking about power now. A lot of businesses are dependent on power for supply. And we also understand the dynamics with, uh, you know, the subsidy and non-subsidy. And we know the cost of purchasing diesel and what have you. Everything is on the high. So it is, it's trickling down. And so whatever it's been given is what you're feeling. If the people are complaining of overtaxing, it's because the environment is not even friendly for the people to generate revenue to, you know, chunking the taxes or pay their taxes. Not an excuse, however. But we also want to agree with me that uh, the, the, the sector, the telecom sector, the digital economy has complained over time about some certain issues. They have talked about low uh, consumer purchasing power. They've talked about, you know, global issues as well. And, uh, this, uh, and also the issue of investment, having a, you know, investors coming to invest. I mean, so the issues are encompassing. And how do you expect to tax the people, even in the midst of all of this crisis, doing business? Okay. Okay, let me say this. I don't work for, like I said earlier, I don't work for government. I've never been in government. I'm not the PR of government. I'm not the spokesman of government. I'm not the one that they come in to tell you uh, the things government is doing like in in vis a vis the things you have uh, eliminated but the question i will ask a uh, very big one how did you you said no road how did you get to your office this morning through a bush track i mean you got to your office today through a road built not by you but by government i mean you stay in vi and if you look at uh, some of the roads in vi and other areas you will understand you, you will not be making such as a as a reporter you will not make such uh, no, the, 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 so let's even say this, sir, uh, because, because just you have just raised this issue. Just, just, the, just, the, hold on, just hold on, sir. Just, just hold on, sir. Just hold on, sir. Let me answer for, for want of time. I, like I said, I give that uh, coverage. I, I, I give that um, that caveat. I don't work for government. I've never worked for government before. But again, when we analyze government issues, we don't make blanket statements. For instance, let us look at some of that. Stuff. We said no raising infrastructure. I'm sure today... Uh, people flying Lagos Ibadan Expressway will tell you a different story. People flying uh, 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 Binia or Railroad will tell you quite a different story. People flying some of the areas will tell you some different stories. A, a week ago, you saw you saw a cement uh, a cement power project that is that is that I mean I mean cement uh, uh, equipment brought in for power. You see, you saw you've been, you've been hearing second uh, 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 Niger Bridge or what will be so these are all some of the things that yes we, we, we have long years of infrastructure deficit so some of the things that happen now is like a, a drop of water in the mighty ocean but they keep they, 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 I mean they keep bubbling now if you take Lagos sorry sorry I'm saying this if you take Lagos uh, by the 90s when federal government left even the area you are your office is today was a no good area you look at what's happening along that lucky corridor of Lagos. It is investment in go by government. You look at what's happening in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Eco Atlantic, you know how Eco Bridge, I'm sure that if, if, it is, if, if it is before now, your office would have been gotten covered by water. But you see what happened in that, uh, 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 what they call the Bar Beach area, the, 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 the lucky, the, I mean the Bar Beach something. You know today that something is, government at least is investing. Like you said, today, you say government is not doing anything. People don't understand the fact that we are buying the cheapest fuel in the world. Part of it paid by government. Even our next door neighbors are jealous of us. So, but this, like I said, I'm not going to defend government because that is government business. Those in government that are insulated to defend us. But I'm talking about Nigeria. Today we are fighting a, a war that has no boundary, no front line, insurgency war. And you see every day how government equips bringing equipment for the military, for the police, and all that. Yes, Alexa, uh, Alexa, we have to go, but, 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 but um, so we, we have to go now. So these taxes, so these taxes that are being charged, today universities are not, federal government universities do not pay, pay, pay fees. And, and let's just have to be paid today. They're asking for one trillion. Where will it come from? So all these are burden that government has to carry. And we need to find a way. Yes, I'm not for overtasking. I know that taxes should be cut out on everything. But again, we find ourselves in a situation where the income coming in is becoming increasingly insufficient. And government, no matter who is there today, they don't print money, they don't manufacture money. They do things that will raise money, and that is what the citizens have to pay for. And unfortunately so, my, my that's unfortunately so, but again, there must be proper management because corruption is high in government. Uh, a, co a cost of, I mean, collection of even these taxes is fought with corruption. If you know what happened in, uh, in federal, federal in land revenue service, even state land revenue service, how much that they steal, how much that they, they are much. But again, 
these are some of the things that we must grapple with and we must get things done and done them better for the benefit of today and for the future Nigerians. Well, uh, Alexa, I, I wish we can actually continue this conversation because this is I'm not theory. I'm always available anytime. But, I, um, I, I, I'm I, mean, I mean, we're talking about real issues here and how, you know, Nigerians and those who live in this economy are thriving. With the government, all of this is efforts. And if you have a group of persons who are saying, hey, it's okay not to over laden, you know, a particular sector, you know, with taxes, so that you would encourage the economy to boost. Because over time, some people would say it's because the government has actually relaxed in terms of, you know, having different uh, revenues of generating revenue. And that, that's why, you know, taxation has become, you know, the number one drive. We understand all of that. But over time, with the little taxes that has been paid, what are the dividends of it? I came through the office this morning, not, you know, in space, but via road. I would have gotten here in real time, if not of the, if you look at the state of the roads, they're not, you know, motorable. I mean, for every time it rains in Lagos, we're in flood. Vehicles are trapped every other spaces and people are paying taxes. So what are we but, even but saying madam, right madam, now? Madam, madam, don't, don't, so, no, but, but, this is, but these are some of today, the issues now. Today, Pakistan, is, Pakistan is on that. No, but we cannot continue to say that because it's going wrong in other country and we're comparing it. It's, it's not a comparison. No, you can, it's not, look, it's a comparison because sometimes we think that Nigeria is the worst country. And we talk down our country. Well, nobody, you, nobody is saying it's a worst country. country. We're saying that if we're paying taxes, then we should see dividends down. of yes, taxes that have been paid. It, and it's coming. It's coming, but it may not be the one you want. So if you talk about flood, look, do you see how flood in Babbage? When last you see flood in Babbage? When last? And some of the actions of flood is caused by we Nigerians. When you block the drainage, when you when, when you throw that into the drains, when you build your house across the drainage line, even against government. But whose responsibility is it to ensure that government, government. we need to go now? It is you press people that encourages people because you come on air and you tell them the wrong things. And when government wants to do something, you you criticize government on air for the, I don't work for government. I repeat, I don't work for government. I don't work for working government before. But I'm talking as a Nigerian because we see these things happening and we kill the country and we talk about the country and we don't even make comparisons to what's happening outside this country. That was the time that UK was under flood. Come on, it happens once in a while. But that does not mean that you didn't walk on a good road to the office. It does not mean that you've not had you've not had freebies. If you have a car, driving a car to the government is funding that car. If you have a child in the university today, in the, in the federal university, government is funding that child. So let's not be let's not be too emotive about what we don't get in Nigeria as against uh, the little that we can even get. Yes, I have made the point clear. I have never been a beneficiary of anything government. I've never. I have never. So I'm not speaking for government, but we are speaking as Nigerians. We all sometimes, over times, we talk about our country, we brought it down, we ridicule it, and then we make people feel that nothing is happening in the country. But this is far from the truth. So the Lagos is building bridges, infrastructure to keep things going. And we don't acknowledge them, but we don't talk about the wrong ones. My dad, we need to have a new approach, a, 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 new, a, a new mindset as to what the country so can advise people properly to key in into the positions are available. The positions are there, but we sometimes we come on air and we, and, and we pamper them and we don't make them understand that there are these opportunities. I think for me, that is just the, 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 the negative part of some of the things that we do on air. Well, many thanks for being part of the show this morning. We appreciate your thoughts, but we'll say that government cannot be taken out of the issue of governance, including the they flood and better. flooding. Uh, the flooding and all of the issues that we're experiencing, in they it's still part of government's government responsibility to ensure government that laws are protected. Government, yes. No, the government must rise up and do better. Uh, and so we have to hold them accountable. Thank you so much. We have to let you go now. The citizens have a part to play. And government has a role to ensure that the citizen obey the laws. A big role. It's a still big part role, of that. A big role. Mm -hmm. A big role. But the citizens has to also key in into that role because everyone has their own role. Well, that's the size of it. Uh, we believe that, like I always say, it, it's, it's a collective responsibility. And like I would always say, I would not stop to say that government has a role. It is government's responsibility to ensure that lives and properties are protected. It is government response. We can't take them out of the equation to ensure that our gutters are free from, you know, uh, being clogged by whatever it is. We have accessible roads, motorable roads. It is their responsibility. Citizens have a role to play, but you would also chunk, you know, much of the responsibility to government. That's the size of it. We take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at a second conversation. Nigeria orders to benefit from $2 billion OPEC funds. Stay with us.